Hey everyone, welcome in to Next Round Preps. John Lunsford, Jerry Young here with you. Jerry, we just got through with a good week full of non-region play, but guess what? We're heading into week six now and region play is going to kick back up. Yeah, I know. And you know, these matchups that we had last week, some of them were incredible. We got some good games to talk about. Yeah, of course, the game we were at was the biggest one. We'll get to that here in a second but uh, a couple of big matchups we had Jacksonville taking on Ohachi two good records here in this one but well Jacksonville took it to Ohachi 51 to 6 they're the Jacksonville's number 17 in class 4a and uh looking to move their way up a lot of good teams down in class 4a uh, another one Montgomery Catholic 42 to nothing over Demopolis I mean we talk about how good Demopolis is but 42 to nothing man Montgomery Catholic uh, they're undefeated I know aren't yeah. they? yeah so uh yeah, uh, I was shocked. That's one of those. I figured that'd be a one touchdown ball game. As much as we talk about Sarah Lynn, Thompson, Clay, Central, kind of the top four teams, and in a little different order after this past week, but uh, I mean Montgomery Catholic, pound for pound, they're right up there too. Uh, it's a really, really solid team there in uh, Class Four A. They're only number three though. Number one, Andalusia. They won twenty-seven to ten over Bibb County, who uh, may fall out of the four A rankings. They were eighth right there, but Andalusia, number one, and uh, not really shocking that they won this game. Andalusia, they're on fire. Uh, Mars Hill, number one in Class Three A, got a big win over Russellville, twenty-seven to twenty-four. Uh, Russellville, uh, always a good team in Five A. I believe we're undefeated coming into this, but you know, close game still. You know, Mars Hill, they're they're looking good. Yeah, and you can always count on. Mars Hill to be there, but the fact that they beat them by three points, that was a tight ball game. I never expected uh, Mars Hill to win. I thought Russellville would take it by a touchdown. Yeah, close game last year between these two as well, 31-30. Um, Faith Academy, how about this? Fall to St. Paul's 40-7. to Faith Academy barely in the top 10 in 5A, but they fall out. St. Paul's is a team that in 6A they do okay. They're a playoff team. They'll be that you know third or fourth team out of Region 1. Drop down to 5A, and they dominate, and they showed it right here, beating Faith Academy down in Mobile. Uh, Pleasant Grove, a little bit of a shock here. Pleasant Grove beat Parker, uh, number 4 in 5A, Pleasant Grove. Parker, number 6 in 6A. Parker uh, beating Ramsey earlier this year as well. Pleasant Grove gets the win 22-21 in that one. A little bit of an upset there over Parker. Um, Hartzell and Oxford also 22-21. Hartzell gets the win over Oxford, handing them their first loss. Uh, not a region game but Oxford very much still in the running there uh, basically against Clay Chaltville in uh, 6A region 6 to try to win that region title and remember that's Oxford's first loss of the year so uh, you know tough loss there but they're five and one yeah, Hartzell uh, been pretty good on the season. They are now 5-1 and one as well uh, with a non-region loss early in the season to a 7A team. Uh, speaking of 7A, Muscle Shoals, they jumped up to play James Clemens. They won 42-28 to over James Clemens. Muscle Shoals, they're uh, looking really good in the region against Hartzell. They actually play this coming week, so we'll talk about that here in a second to see who's going to be in the lead in uh, that region up in 6A. Homewood. At Pinson Valley, Homewood goes on the road, gets the win. They were down 7 nothing in the first half, came back and won 10-7. to I doubted my Patriots uh, in our pregame sh- show on Friday at Thompson, but uh, you actually went with Homewood, so I'll give you kudos for picking that one. I did, and, you know, uh, Pleasant Grove, they, they've they lost four games now. They, their first game, they beat Florence, and I said, well, look at this. All of a sudden, you know, uh, Pleasant Grove, I Pinson mean. Pinson Valley. Uh, Pinson Valley, I said Pleasant Grove. Pinson Valley is doing good, but, you know, this is a big win for Homewood. They needed this for a lot of reasons, but it it puts their stamp of approval on the season now, kind of ready to go moving into the region play. Start off 0-3, now they're 3-3 and and 2-1 and in region play. And, I mean, they've already uh, gotten past Helena. That was their one loss in region play. But outside of that, I mean, there's a chance they can still finish second and uh, get a home game despite the slow start to the season. Hillcrest, Tuscaloosa all over Gadsden City. Uh, Hillcrest number three in Class 6A behind Sarah Lynn and Clay. They got a big win, 32-3 in uh, that inter-region matchup in Class 6A. Also, Mortimer Jordan, 24-20 winners over Coleman. Mortimer Jordan's looking good this year, too. I agree. I, I, I love this team i think mortimer jordan is a sleeper team i expected them to win although coleman made it a lot closer than we thought it might be yeah coleman uh trying to compete for a playoff spot they're probably still a playoff team but mortimer jordan they're looking solid so far this season theodore kind of a shock here theodore struggled in class 6a region one but they go uh they don't go on the road they hosted opelika and beat opelika 16 to 10 now opelika is not central they're not auburn you know, I would probably have slotted them fourth in Region 2, but that's a tough region in 7A Region 2. 
But they go to Theodore and lose at Theodore, a tough 6A Region 1 team there. Uh, so we'll see if Obelaki can bounce back in region play uh, this coming week. Big matchup against Auburn just down the road. Um, how about this? Foley, wow. 20 points. Okay, Foley, 20 points in the game. You think Mike could potentially win it? No, Saralyn, 70 points. Saralyn, I, I, look, we work for Thompson, so I've waffled back and forth between Thompson and Saralyn, who the actual number one team is. Right. Now that Thompson has lost, there is without a doubt, no doubt in my mind, Saralyn is the number one team uh, in the state, followed probably by Clay Chalville, so I'd probably put two 6A teams up there. But, I mean, Saralyn absolutely dominated this game over Foley team that's potentially a playoff team. And I don't know anybody that can even remotely touch Saralyn outside of potentially Clay in the Super 7. What do you say? Win by 50. <laughs> I, I mean, mean they're rolling. Lot. They're just rolling. That's a lot of points. It is. Uh, Dothan in a 7A matchup. Number 7 in Do- uh, 7A Dothan. They beat Baker, who is uh, currently leading Region 1 down there with Foley. Um, they won 35-14 to at Baker, so Baker will likely drop out of the uh, ASWA rankings. Um, Austin, they beat Gardendale. Gardendale still looking for their first win of the yeah. season. Wow. Uh, they're playing Jackson Nolan this week. Both are winless, so somebody's got to get their first win. Uh, I'm thinking Gardendale might finally get that first win but boy Austin 38 to 7 over a struggling Gardendale Rocket team I picked Ramsey over Auburn that was my upset of the week in our uh, our uh, pregame show at Thompson Auburn gets the win 13 to 7 up here in Birmingham however Ramsey was up 7 to 3 at halftime and uh, Auburn ended up scoring a touchdown and getting a field goal late to uh, end up stopping Ramsey they, get, they then they stopped Ramsey on defense but I'll give Ramsey some credit 13 7 against Auburn as a 5A school not too shabby Auburn's having a little quarterback issue they've got some injuries there at that position it's keeping them from putting the points up but it shows you just how strong the Tigers defense no doubt Auburn uh, like I mentioned they're playing Opelika this week so that should be a good one there Briarwood they uh, they have right of the ship kind of like Homewood start off right. struggling but they've looked pretty good since 21 nothing winners over 7A Oak Mountain Oak Mountain struggling in 7A region 3 probably the bottom team in that region but uh, we'll see how things play out Hoover they play Mountain Brook Mountain Brook I expected to win this game and they did win by 10 34 to 24 over the Bucks. this is one that has been a very lopsided rivalry between Hoover and Mountain Brook and understandably so it's Hoover but it ain't Hoover anymore. How many times have you been asked the last few weeks what's going on at Hoover? Uh, more than I can count. And guess what? I'm telling. I got no earthly idea. <laughs> I don't either. If we had that idea, if Hoover had that idea, they'd fix it. Yep. So uh, yeah, we don't know. Nobody knows. But Hoover's just not Hoover this year. Now this is the time for Hoover to start kind of turning it around. They got uh, they have Oak Mountain this week. I assume would be their second win of the season. They're one and two in region play. Uh, that one went over Spain Park, but. You know, for Hoover, this week, Thompson and Hewitt Trustful, and we'll get to all this in a second, that's going to help kind of set up the top of the region because Vest David is also there. So you kind of know your top three. But Hoover, they have a fight just to get in that four spot. Now it gets the easier part of their schedule. But if they drop anywhere along the way, knowing that Thompson's sitting at the end, you're all of a sudden talk, potentially talking about Hoover missing the playoffs, which is so bizarre to even remotely think about. And we saw it again this past week, Mountain Brook 134 to 24. However, the game we were at. Yes. 7A number one Thompson hosting 6A number two Clay Chalkville. And boy, it was back and forth, back and forth. It was 13 to nothing after the uh, first quarter. It was 13 because it ended up being a, a very important extra point was blocked. The left tackle for Thompson got hurt. The next play they score, that, that gap is exactly where somebody comes through and blocks the extra point. 13 nothing. Then Clay scores twice to make it 14-13. Then Thompson scores twice, and then it ends up being a wild and crazy fourth quarter. Yeah, the whole game I said, well, Thompson's got this. I was breathing. And then all of a sudden they caught us like, "Uh uh-oh. And then we got ahead again. It's like Thompson's going to win. I'm breathing good. And then all of a sudden, "Uh uh-oh. And then the almost miracle finish. You know, uh, I learned a long time ago, you cannot count Thompson out. Uh, If you're within, you know, 50 points with five minutes to go or <laughs> something. Thompson seems to always have way. But the missed field go as time ticked off the clock was just unfortunate for Thompson. I would have loved to have seen some overtime with these two teams. But they're evenly matched. Clay Chalkville's quarterback and wide receiver made the difference in that game. Uh, the quarterback uh, – uh, Jalen Mbakwe. Mbakwe. I couldn't uh, call his name. But, yeah, 
He's uh, going to Alabama, and he's worth the price of admission. He is. By the way, Jalen Mbakwe, our Milo's player of the week for what he did. It was his 18th, 18th birthday. I did not know that until after the game, yeah, but it was his 18th birthday there. Um, he finished the game 10 of 13, passing for 100 yards, but rushed 27 times for 168 yards. And look, overall, the stat line's not super impressive. You see a lot of, you know, 1A, 2A, 3A games where these guys get 500 yards and they're the do it all player. Mbakwe was the do it all player. Overall, not a crazy stat line against a good Thompson team, but bottom line, when it came down to it, he had five touchdowns, scored all their points for him. I mean, just did literally everything. Had a two-point conversion pass that was illegal. We'll get to that uh, another day. But um, for a, a, a not a touchdown pass, but it'll count as a two-point conversion uh, there for him. Absolutely played phenomenal. Look, he's a talented player. Like you mentioned, he's going to Alabama. Probably going to play defensive back at Alabama. That's how athletic he is. Um, I mean, I, I don't know what to say about the dude other than that he's good. <laughs> he's just a good player. That's why I got our Milo's player of the week. Absolutely, and it well-deserved. Happy birthday. Yeah, you got a good birthday yeah. win there over Thompson. And, hey, in, uh, in aggregate, the two games are 50-50. to 50. Uh, Thompson beat him by three. Last year, Clay beat him by three this year. Um, all that says to me is I think a nice grudge match, champion versus champion potentially, if they can get Sarah Lynn, um next year and, uh, you know, make it happen. It's going to be a new two-year cycle. But if you really want to do a true champions challenge like they tried to do with that game in Montgomery, that's what they called it at first. And now it's right. just the kickoff classic. But I think uh, Thompson and Clay, except let's play that one at Protective Stadium down the road, and I think you could fill that thing up because it was packed Friday night at Thompson. But uh, anyway, we'll talk about all the games coming up as we get back into region play. Bracketology now starting to come into play as well. However, one of our great new sponsors. Yeah, before we go to break, I want to tell you about Shepherd Equipment. It's S-H-E-P-H-E-R-D equipment.com. That's where you can find them. Let me tell you some of the things they do. Light demo work, like tearing down decks or sheds and hauling all the debris off. They can do that. They do land clearing. They do bush hogging, brush cutting. Uh, They'll rent you a dumpster. That's residential or commercial. They have 15 and 20 yard dumps. They do dirt work. They carve trails. Um, They spread gravel. They build dirt roads. If you need a road built on your property or your land cleared, that's who you want to call. Shepherdequipment.com or you can give them a call at 205-704-0408. Thanks so much to shepherdequipment.com. When we get back, week six is coming up, the seventh week of the season for most te- most teams, as confusing as it always is. And uh, look, this is where things start getting important for a lot of these teams. Last week didn't count unless you get in a wild tiebreaker. This week counts and a lot of important games. We'll get to that. We'll get back right here on Next Round Preps. Have you or a loved one been diagnosed with mild cognitive impairment, which is brain changes that are starting to interfere with your life? Did you know researchers have proven that these brain changes can be slowed down or reversed in many people that routinely exercise their brain? At the Karen Thrive Foundation, we specialize in helping you understand the specific areas of the brain that have changed and develop a brain health plan, including cognitive exercises, adaptive approaches, and helpful technology to proactively stay ahead of your brain wellness. Visit www.karenthrive.org for more information. We've partnered with Who Is Coffee to create the next round blend. Available in light, medium, and dark roast. 100% Arabica beans. Specialty coffee roasted on demand. Available in whole bean or ground for drip pods. Espresso and coarse ground for French press. Go to nextround.store to get a link to pre-order today. Everyone that pre-orders will be entered to win a prize pack with coffees, shirts, hats, and tumblers. Nextround.store for the next round blend. And welcome back in to Next Round Preps. We start to look ahead to week six of the high school football season. And now region play picks back up. And now after this week... We'll have a majority of region games played. I can start that bracketology process. And as we go along, I'll try to kind of keep up with where teams are um, in their region. But a lot of football still left to play, regardless of what the brackets might say right now. Let's start down south. Team, we've uh, A couple teams we've talked about a lot here. Uh, T.R. Miller at Bayside Academy. Two good teams down south. Uh, Bayside Academy at 4-1. Uh, and one. T.R. Miller at 3-2. and two. Both 2-1 two and one in the region. Should be a good one down south. Absolutely. These two teams have met 15 times, John. T.R. Miller's won them 11, 11 and 4. Barrett Trotter, the new coach, as we said, at Bayside Academy, he's turned that whole program around. 
Can they knock off T.R. Miller? T.R. Miller's struggling a little bit. We're going to find out. Both these teams lost to Jackson by 30-plus points, yeah. so that shows who the king is down there. No doubt. But, uh, yeah, T.R. Miller, Base Academy, both still playoff teams. And, uh, look, I got this one as a field goal game here. Should be a good matchup between these two. Obviously, Base Academy turned things around with Barrett Trotter down there as head coach. Valley sitting at 4-1 and in the season, 2-0 and in region play. They travel to Central Clay County. We've talked about how good uh, Central has been. This is for sole possession of first in 5A Region 4. Uh, I think Central gets a big win here over them. But Valley, solid season so far uh, battle of unbeaten scottsboro 5-0 2-0 in region at gunnersville 5-0 and 2-0 in region as well scottsboro won last year 17-14 chris bell head coach at uh that scottsboro who was the head coach at uh, oak mountain for a long time there it's in his third year i believe at scottsboro so we'll see if they can get the win over gunnersville in a battle of unbeatens leeds and Southside gaston both right now fighting to be a front runner there with moody in uh in that region down in 5a um Got Leeds is about a touchdown favorite in this one over Southside. I'm looking forward to that Ludi. Ludi. <laughs> I yeah. just combined the two. That's right. Leeds and Moody came uh, coming up here later in the season, but uh, should be a good one there between Southside and Leeds. Elsewhere in Class 5A, a little bit of a surprising uh, record to look at. If you told me Pleasant Grove was 4-1, and one, okay, uh, you know, lost, you know, a uh, game somewhere along the way, lost to um, Ramsey. Ramsey, you know, okay, Ramsey's mm-hmm. top dog in that region. But guess what? Sitting unbeaten, John Carroll. Man, can you believe this? 5-0, and 3-0. and Here's the thing, John. I want to read out how many points they've scored in these five wins. 36, 43, 45, 44, 43. I think their average is obviously 43. My goodness gracious, they got an offense, okay? And then they've been able to hold, uh, you know, Homewood's the only team that gave them a game. Of course, yeah. that's a rivalry game to start the year. And a step up in classification, that's too. That's right. Yeah. So, uh yeah, I'm I'm on board with John Carroll. The Cavaliers doing a great job. They are definitely hitting the harder uh, part of their schedule in the back half, but still a solid start. Five and zero, three and zero at Pleasant Grove. Though we'll see if Pleasant Grove can uh, get the win. John Carroll still has Ramsey and Winona, who are looking like the other two playoff teams. There. Speaking of Ramsey and Winona, how about a Thursday night game between Ramsey and Winona? Winona five and one, two and one in uh, region play. Ramsey's four and two after they lost Auburn this past weekend. Uh, they lost Auburn and Parker. They're three and zero in region play. I, I like Ramsey in this one, but a battle of uh, two Birmingham City schools there uh, to kind of help. Those are basically your four playoff teams right there uh i would probably rank them ramsey pleasant grove john carroll winona kind of fighting for that third spot but uh, i do think those are your four playoff teams in that region in 5a moving up to class 6a rush probes as every week it's a story with rush probes and uh this week they travel to oxford who had their first loss of the season uh out of region play last week they're still 3-0 in region play pell city one and four overall one and one in region play um Still alive for the playoffs, technically. It's a, a smaller region than, than some others are, but um, don't know if they can get it past Oxford. No, they can't. Oxford, they're going to put an end, I think, to Pell City's chances, although it may be a mathematical chance. But I really believe Oxford's a good football team. They slipped last week, but I think they'll come back and handle Pell City. Yeah, Pell City, that region, you got Clay, who's the clear front runner, Oxford, who's right there next to him. You got Center Point, who's had their moments this year, good and bad. And then it's kind of who's fighting for the fourth spot. spot. Pinson has not looked good. They only have one win on the season. Pell City only has one win on the season. Uh, Shades Valley sitting right there as well. Obviously, uh, Ruben Nelson knows how to get a team in the playoffs. So we'll see what happens there with Pell City. Um, speaking of Shades Valley, 3-2, and 1-1 one and one on the season. They're at center point this week, 4-2 and two, uh, on the season, 1-2 and two in region play. Uh, like I said, both those teams still fighting for the playoffs right there with Pell City. Assuming you get a loss at, uh, at Oxford for Pell City, that's a super important game for both these teams between Center Point and Shades Valley. Uh, a matchup that's probably a region title game, if I had to guess. Muscle Shoals, 5 0, 2 0 in region play at Hartzell, who's 5 1, 2 0 in region play. Uh, the winner of this, because it's actually an only, only a six team region, locks up a playoff spot this early in the season, but the winner also uh, basically puts themselves in the driver's seat for the region championship in that region. In region four, Hewitt, uh, not Hewitt Trussell. <laughs> I'd see the HT and say Hewitt Trussell. <laughs> Hillcrest Tuscaloosa, right. uh, six and zero, three and zero on the season at Central Tuscaloosa, who's four and two, two and one on the season. Not too bad, moving up into Class Six A. But uh, I think we all know Hillcrest is the favorite here in this one and going to be the top dog there in that region. Really, the battle comes for Central Tuscaloosa between like McAdory, Hueytown. 
um, Northridge, the other teams that might could work their way in there in the Region 4. But, you know, Central Tuscaloosa is playing better this year than they have in a lot of years. Oh, yeah. So, you know, they keep this going on, parlay this into next year. This team's coming alive. Right now I'd probably put it Hillcrest – Maybe McAdoo, then Hueytown, and then Central as the fourth team potentially. So uh, Central still has a good chance to make it. They're already two and one in that region. Briarwood, we talked about they've righted the ship, actually sitting at the top, tied with Helena. Actually, they're a game behind, but they're both unbeaten. Um, half a game behind, I guess I should say. They're both unbeaten in region play. And this is basically for who's going to be in control of the region, Briarwood and Helena. Yeah, you know, if you look at Briarwood, you go back to the first game of the season, you play Childville, okay, we got beat. The yeah. second game of the season is where it's – working on their crawl, even though it didn't matter in region standing. Losing that game to Spain Park, I think that they were a much better team. Don't know what happened that night, but Spain Park, um, you know, obviously beat them. Matthew Forrester at Briarwood, Richie Busby at Helena. This is going to be a good, good ball game, I believe. However, Helena obviously is going to go into it as a favored team. Yeah, I got Helena as about a three-touchdown favorite right now just yeah. based on how things have played because those first couple games did throw things really off for Briarwood. However, Briarwood loses this game. They go to 2-1 and one in region play. Guess who's sitting right there waiting to fight for that second spot? The Homewood Patriots who are off this Homewood. week. I love this homewood Briarwood game. It became a big rivalry when I was in school back in the early 2000s with the Castiles at Briarwood yeah. uh, with me at Homewood. And, I mean, it was – Phenomenal rivalry back then. Kind of fell off lately. Briarwood struggled, and Homewood's been uh, the better team. But, boy, if this is for a home game in the playoffs and much better seating, should be a really good one between Briarwood and Homewood coming up later this season. Uh, all right, this is uh, a little interesting to see. <laughs> Gardendale, we mentioned it, 0-5 on the season, 0-2 in region play. They're at Jackson Owen, who's 0-6 and 0-3 in region play. Now, these two teams are winless. This is a Thursday night game. I fully expect Gardendale to win this game. Jackson Owen just has not been the same since Tim Vakakis left. They've only scored 26 total points this year in six games. You look at their uh, schedule, it's not too favorable for Jackson Owen. But Gardendale, hey, the Rockets, they need a win. This could be a good boost for them in the back half of the season. Yeah, and the you know big thing for Jackson Owen is they're playing at home. That's about the only real plus you can put on their side of the paper if you were listen, uh, listing items. Gardendale's winless, but Gardendale, I think, is a much better team than Jackson Owen, Owen will find out. I'll just tell the Gardner band director, don't keep playing after the game is over That's at right. Jackson Owen. Enterprise, they are at Prattville, 4-1, and 2-1 and one on the season for Enterprise, 4-1, 1-1 uh, – or no, Prattville is not 4-1. and one. Uh, They are – are they one and four? I have that backwards. They're one and two in region play. Right. Um, Prattville uh, – but Enterprise at Prattville. We mentioned last week of Prattville uh, – or two weeks ago, I guess, with Prattville, a like a loser, that one was likely on their way out. I would say the same thing here. But this is – that was more of a – trend you're on your way out if Prattville loses this one to Enterprise they are actually on their way out um, because you got to be a top four team in a, in a region that's got five or six potential playoff teams well, I went to that um, Prattville's game last week we were off Friday and I drove down to Prattville watched them play in their rivalry game with Stanhope Elmore which turned out to be a fantastic ball game like we knew it, it would be however this week is going to be completely different Prattville uh you know, I guess after watching Thompson and maybe some other Region 3 teams, I noticed the speed. They don't have the speed that they should have for a 7A team. Depth seems to be there. Absolutely the effort is there. The coaching is there. I think they just seem to be a half a step behind. But they did beat uh, uh, Elmore. You know, so I think Enterprise just going to – man, we all know this. The thing is, I think Enterprise gets the win easy enough, but – Enterprise isn't even necessarily in the playoffs because of how good Dothan is playing this year. They're put they they're solidly in right now. Of course, you have Central and Auburn who you kind of pencil in, but then Opelika potentially is that fourth team. The way they're playing, that I mean, they lost to Theodore, but that's a non-region game. But overall, they've looked okay this season. The only other bad loss was to uh, to Thompson. You know, beginning of the season, they also have to play each other. There's a lot of region games to go, but. I mean, there's a chance Enterprise still could miss. So this is an absolute must win for them. Right. This is one of those that, look, everyone's important, but this one's really important for both. You know, one thing that's interesting is they were supposed to start yesterday, a few days ago, I should say, on tearing down the visitor side at Stanley Jensen Stadium there at Prattville. So the visitors is now going to become the home side. All this construction is going to take a year. They decided to do it halfway through the season. Enterprise has got to leave their band at home. Oof. Okay, because there's That's not rough. enough seating. They're going to close that whole visitor side. I mean, you can't even get on there. And the home side now 
is going to hold. It's going to be limited seating. That's very all much a Mountain Brook split, kind of how you have That's all the exactly same side. Right. Yeah. Ooh. yeah. It's going to be. I've never liked it in Mountain Saturday. Brook. I wouldn't like it down there either That's with right. uh, seven day schools coming in there all the time. So we'll keep keeping an eye on Enterprise in Prattville. Meanwhile, uh, Dothan, they are at Central Phoenix City. Dothan, been really good in the season, but Central, I guess with the Thompson loss now, we looked at as uh, potentially the number one team in the state up in Class 7A. It's going to be a tough one for Dothan. Yeah, I know. I, you know, I, I kind of picked Dothan last week, uh, you know, on the Baker game, but. Central is playing good. I, I really think that Central will take this game without any problem, but Dothan's going to give them a fight. Dothan's a good football team. Dothan is a good football team. Uh, they're only lost by all, uh, by one to Auburn in double overtime. So uh, Dothan looking to take it to Central Phoenix City, hand them their first loss. But I do like Central still in this game at home. Um, which, by the way, it always cracks me up. Every time I see Central Phoenix City's name, it always cracks me up that the very next day there's Patrick Nick sitting in the stands in Oregon or somewhere on the West Coast right. to watch Bo play. You talk about a fast turnaround. Which, by the way, if we ever get a vote, it should be a law that you cannot call your school Central. We got enough Centrals in Alabama. <laughs> there are okay? a lot. I mean, why do we even say the word Central? Why don't we just call it Phoenix City or, you know, whatever? It, it is so weird, especially when you go on the uh, Alabama High School Football Historical Society right. website and you just go to C, go to Central – Okay, there's Central here, Central there, Amen. Central, 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 Central. Um, to me, when I just say Central, it's Phoenix City. Right. But I think Clay County has a good argument for that to be Central Clay County. But I always have to say Central Clay County. Yeah. But I just say Central for Phoenix like if you're City. In Tuscaloosa, everybody thinks the. Tus- I mean, it's that way in yeah. region. You know, I mean, it is. But, it's uh, it's uh, all yeah, over the I'm place. I'm just saying HSAA. <laughs> No more Central. Don't allow them to be named that. <laughs> we talked about three of them, Clay that. County, Tuscaloosa, and Phoenix City. I guess that wouldn't be HSAA. It would be State School Board or whoever. <laughs> yeah. But no more Central. Shut it down. Right. Um, Auburn, 5-1, 3-1 of the season at Opelika. We mentioned Opelika. They've had some non-region losses, but uh, Opelika's only lost in region play by 10 to Central Phoenix City. Auburn lost to Enterprise by one. Um, I mean, this is, once again, a good game that could help de- decide some playoff spots, but – Realistically, this the winner of this game could be potentially be number two, depending on what happens with Dothan. If Dothan gets uh, taken out by Central Phoenix City, they'll be sitting at three and two. Loser of this game will be three and two, but the winner will be four and one right there next to Central Phoenix City. So an important one down at Opelika. Moving up to Class Seven uh, A Region Four, Spartman and James Clemens. This is for the lead in the region, and I would say potentially the region championship. I'll give Spartman a lot of credit. They're five and zero, three and zero in region play. James Clemens, they've lost a couple non-region games, but also three and zero in region play. It should be a good one up north yeah i think so sparkman five and oh might be a little bit of a sleeper i still think james clemens is a, a good football team but i think sparkman should take this game yeah i'm leaning sparkman in this one as well all right in seven eight region three we've talked about hoover can they write the ship as they host oak mountain oak mountain at one and five and hoover at one and five you never would have thought you'd said that but uh, oak mountain with one non-region wins they're oh and three in region play hoover did beat spain park I fully expect Hoover to win this game and win this game soundly, but the way the season has gone, I don't know. I don't know either. I, mean, <laughs> I can't this say anything. Is one of those you don't know. I'm I'm actually looking forward to this game. I want to see if uh, you know Hoover's taking advantage now and put some things back together. This is an Oak Mountain team that they can beat. We know that. Will they? We'll find out. They should. They actually started with a tougher part of the schedule. First game, rivalry game against Spain Park uh, as far as region play. And then um, playing Vestavia and Hewitt, who are two playoff teams sitting there probably uh, two and three right now, depending on what happens this week. Vestavia, they are at Chelsea. Fully expect Vestavia to get a big win here, though. Chelsea sitting at one and two in region play. Vestavia two and one. Uh, Both of those teams losing to Thompson, adding to their loss category. Spain Park, they are at Tuscaloosa County. Spain Park. Needs to try to right the ship. They're the only other 0-3 team. And if they beat County, this could make it a lot easier for Hoover to sneak in that fourth spot. Tuscaloosa County really hadn't shown me anything yet. They hadn't played anybody. To be 4-1, yeah. Back. Yeah, so this is going to be a game. If they're going to show something, they got to show it right here. they got to beat Spain Park if they want to advance and have a shot at the playoffs. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually kind of sort of leaning Spain Park in this one, but uh, should be a good game there at County over in Tuscaloosa. Uh, Thompson at Hewitt Trustville. Uh, I know we're biased, but uh, potentially game of the week here. Four and one Thompson after they lost to Clay Chaltville last week. Three and zero in region play. Hewitt Trustful five and one. They lost to Central Phoenix City pretty bad in that very first game of the season. They're three and zero in region play. If Thompson wins, they basically absolutely cruise to the region title because they would have to lose to two teams to potentially put either the winner, the winner of the Hewitt Vestavia game in over them. And the rest of their schedule is County, 
Oat Mountain, and Hoover, which surprisingly enough, are three. <laughs> the county is the best team of those. Right. Hoover is near the bottom, and Oat Mountain is at the bottom. So, um, yeah, if Thompson wins, they cruise the region title. But if Hewitt wins, and Hewitt, they're chomping at the bit after Thompson uh, fell to what was their rival in Clay Chaltville last week, um, then that sets up a hewitt Vestavia game next week that – could either absolutely cause chaos or finally give Hewitt that region title. They're so hungry with Hoover out of the way now, and they got that big win. They're so hungry to finally get that. You know, you just said Hoover near the bottom, Oak Mountain at the bottom. That's true. This time next week, we may be reversing that statement. Oh, Wouldn't God. that be something? Can you imagine? Can Can Hoover actually go to the bottom? Yes, they can with a loss to Oak Mountain. But you're right. Thompson in the driver's seat here. You know, Mark Freeman told me one time he came to, to – uh, thompson to win state championships you know you're gonna lose a few that's why you play week five you know those those games are fun they're region games and obviously you know clay chaltville had a great game and thompson still had a chance to tie it up there at the end but those are ball games that were built for national television yeah we know that and so uh but we'll have the call for you on warriornationnetwork.org next week of this i mean friday night so you want to make sure you tune in there. You can listen or watch it on the NFHS Network. Absolutely. should be a good one there. Like I mentioned, both unbeaten in region play. And this is the game that Hewitt has had uh, circled. They finally get a chance. And look, I'm not going to totally put it past Hewitt. The, you know, the ability to get the win, they're, they're good. Their quarterback's back. I mean, they've had a lot of uh, success the past couple of years, and they're looking to break through. They got past one hurdle in Hoover. Now they're trying to get past the hurdle in Thompson. But there's a reason I say bracketology for after this week because of this game. I started going through writing. I was like, I don't want to put Hewitt second. Everybody gets all mad because Hewitt's got a chance to beat Thompson and put Thompson first. But as of right now in Region 3, it is, you know, 1A Thompson, 1B Hewitt. Whoever wins will be first. Whoever loses will be second. Vestavia 3, but they still got to play Hewitt next week. And then Tuscaloosa County. Right now, Tuscaloosa County is fourth, strictly because they're 2-1 and and Hoover's 1-2. and Now, I fully, fully, fully expect to flip Hoover into that fourth spot by the end of the season. But a lot of work still to be done. A lot of big games that we would not have thought Hoover Oak Mountain would have been a big game coming into the season, uh, but it is now, so we'll see what happens with that one. You said a mouthful. I have nothing to it's, add to it's that. The, I mean, it's the truth. It's, there's still a lot of football left to play. And look, next week we'll start talking about bracketology. I'll try to put it online, alepreps.com, uh, and uh, at alepreps on Twitter is where I put all that out. But – I mean, it's going to be a fun week. We're finally back in the region play, and like Jerry mentioned, you can catch us on warriornationnetwork.org and uh, on the NFHS Network as well. We'll be broadcasting live from Hewitt Trustville from, is it just Husky Stadium out Husky there? Husky Stadium, and we'll be on the visitor side, which is Thompson. We're going to sit out in the crowd and broadcast this. Should be a lot of excitement, so you might want to tune in for that. It's a lot better when you're outside because then the whole stadium can hear Jerry scream touchdown <laughs> when right. Thompson scores That's a touchdown. Right. Uh, also getting very animated right there. But anyway, we'll be back next week. We'll recap all these games. We'll look ahead to week seven and finally start talking playoffs and start slotting some teams in. And we'll actually have some spots locked up. Not actual spots, but at least playoff spots locked up for certain regions. We'll get to all that next week right here on Next Round Preps. <laughs>